Okay, today our lecture will focus on the difference between the terms incidence and prevalence. Two terms that may sound similar, but they mean slightly different things. Uh, so let's go ahead and begin with incidence. This video is being created in 2013. So incidence is going, we're going to take a snapshot of the year 2013. Now, percent of population with a certain thing that we're looking at, whether it be uh, people, newborns, born. Uh, we could talk about people with the disease. I like to talk about diseases in medicine. Uh, so let's, let's, let's focus on a disease. So incidence, percentage of people with diabetes, very common disease. So the ETs, can't spell though. Percentage of people diagnosed with diabetes in 2013. Everybody that was diagnosed before 2013 we're going to exclude them. Uh, so this one's just dealing with 2013. Uh, this one's total population. The total sample size that we're looking at. The population. So if I were to say, what's the incidence of people that were diagnosed with diabetes in 2013 in the United States? Well, the United States would be my population. So in the United States, so US population, and percentage of people that were diagnosed this year, 2013, since I prefaced that, the percentage of people with diabetes in 2013, that would be the incidence of diabetes in 2013. Now let's look at prevalence. If I said, what is the prevalence of diabetes in the year 2013 in the United States? Well, I'm still looking at the United States, so, so there's the United States. Now, what's the difference? The incidence was the number of people this year that were diagnosed with diabetes. The prevalence is now going to be the number of people that have diabetes overall in 2013. Some people may have a chronic disease. They, they, were, they had diabetes when they were born in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and they've continued to have it. So the prevalence is going to be a lot higher. Incidence is going to be more point distribution more new onset of cases in 2013. This one's going to be the percentage, I might say new onset, just to differentiate, since I'm not talking about it anymore, of new onset diabetes. This one's the percentage of total diabetes. DM for diabetes mellitus um, in 2013. So the prevalence is going to be a lot higher uh, my grandma would have uh, diabetes, and diabetes didn't go away. It's still there. But she wasn't diagnosed with it in 2013. She was diagnosed with it, let's make up a number, back in the 60s. So, uh, looking at this, she would not count towards incidence, because that happened a long time ago. It's not a new onset. She still has it, so it would count towards the prevalence of that disease. So, it would count towards prevalence. So I like to use uh, examples chronic. Let's look at a chronic case, herpes simplex. Uh, as you may know, herpes simplex is going to be a virus that once it enters your system, it'll never go away. It likes to hang out in the dorsal root ganglion. It goes up in your nerves. It hides. It's there forever. You can't get rid of it. So we can look at herpes simplex with an example over here. Uh, Let's pretend that we have a population of 10 people in our sample. So 10 people in the world. None of them right now have herpes simplex virus. So the incidence would be 0 out of 10, and the prevalence would be 0 out of 10. I'm going to give two people herpes. I know it sounds a little dirty. Maybe that'll make this video a little more entertaining, because it sure isn't very fun subject to learn. But we just gave two people herpes. Congratulations. Our incidence, so this is, so at the very beginning, I'll say it was year zero. And in year zero, there were zero cases. Now we're going to be at year one. Year one. We have two new cases. What was the incidence of herpes in this population in year one? I would say it was two. New onset of, cover that up, herpes in year one, divided by the total population, which was 
10. So our total incidence was two cases out of 10, which would be two out of 10, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.2. My apologies. Uh, what was the prevalence for this? So here we go. Just realized we can make a nice little table. Prevalence. Prevalence and incidence were zero. Nobody had herpes or yeah, you know, herpes in, uh, in that population near zero. We just gave two people herpes. So if I say what's the incidence of herpes in year one, well, we know it's two. Prevalence, what's the prevalence of herpes in year two? The total percent of the people with herpes in, uh, in 2013, in year one, divided by the whole population of 10, it would be still two out of 10. So right now we're looking at the same number. The incidence is equal to the prevalence. However, now let's continue. This is year two. So then I'll do this in a different color to try and hopefully separate it a little. Two more people, you know, they've been kissing. Two new people got herpes simplex virus. What is the incidence in year two of the people with herpes simplex virus? We just said that two new people in year two got herpes. Again, two out of 10. We're not, we don't care about these other people. We just wanna know how many people this year got herpes simplex. Incidence, two out of 10. Now let's take a look at prevalence. How prevalent is that disease in this population? In the year two, how many people have herpes simplex virus? Well, we know that two people got it this year, but also we have to remember that these people didn't get rid of it. You can't get rid of herpes. So the prevalence would be now four out of 10. And then lastly, uh, this year is a bad year. One, two, three, four people just got herpes in year three. Year three was a bad year. What's the incidence? Well, this year, year three, the bad year, four new cases, four out of 10. What's the prevalence? The prevalence now in year three, how many people in our target population have herpes? We have to count all these other years and this year. So it would be eight out of 10. The Q cases are slightly different. Um, one thing I do want to emphasize is an acute case such as, let's say, influenza virus. Uh, most influenza cases are acute. When you get the flu, you have it for a week or two, you get over it. Your body learns to get rid of it. Um, while it's herpes, it was there for life. Now we're going to deal with an acute case. And I actually don't need to use the example for this one. For an acute case, you can almost make the conclusion that in, oop, incidence, incidence is going to be equal to or roughly equal to prevalence. Let's talk about quickly why that is so. Um, it's because when you have influenza, your body has the disease, so incidence is going to be two out of how many people this year got influenza. Let's say in our thing, let's pretend it was year one, two out of ten got influenza. What's the prevalence of influenza? Well, people aren't carrying over the disease. They get over it. It's one and done. You get the disease, a couple weeks later you're better. You don't carry it from year to year to year. So the incidence of influenza is going to approximate the prevalence of influenza for that given time. Because you don't carry that disease from year to year. It's you either get it or you don't. So hopefully this made a little sense. Uh, sorry for the terrible examples. Otherwise, hopefully you'll pay attention and uh, tune in for some more videos.